So welcome everyone um, to this uh, hangout session meetup. Um, today we're, we'll be talking a bit about uh, how Docker containers are available and used uh, for Apache Hop. Um, to start with, um, well, as with all our codes, uh, everything is uh, is publicly available. So let's start here. Uh, if you go to our code repository repository, you will see uh, that we have a, a Docker folder and this Docker folder contains uh, the Docker files that are being continuously created. So on each uh, on each code change, a new uh, version of our Docker images is, uh, is loaded. Um, and when we do a release, uh, we will tag uh, the latest version uh, with the latest tag so you can easily grab it uh, from, uh, from Docker Hub. Um, the Docker Hub locations are uh, in the Apache organization and our incubator hub at the moment. But the moment we leave incubator, it will be it will just be Apache slash hub. Uh, and we also have one for our um, our web based client uh, hub web. Um, our uh, our Docker files are a uh, a great I are very easy setup. Um, they can be used as a as a uh, as a base uh, to extend on, or you can uh, copy our code and modify it uh, based on your needs. So we made one Docker file that contains a hop and can be run both on a standalone mode or as a, uh, a hop server. Um, and everything is documented on our website. So we have a documentation page, uh, which also links to our, um, well, also contains the link to the uh, Docker Hub location. And it also explains all variables that are available to this Docker image um, and which are mandatory uh, to, get, uh, to get things started. Um, there's also samples uh, integrated here. Um, Right. So um, for this, uh, well, it will be a technical session, so we'll, I'll dive into a demo uh, almost instantly. Um, so I created a uh, a small uh, a small hop project. Uh, where's my? I created a small hop project containing a workflow and a pipeline just uh, for sampling purposes, um, and it's located on my uh, local disk in a. A folder that will be mounted uh, to the Docker containers. Um, so this uh, this workflow this workflow just prints some um, just prints a simple message uh, to the um, to the console and to get it running in uh, via the Docker image. Uh, it's just. Just get a shell here. Copy paste the command I prepared. Um, so let's go over everything that is written here. Um, so basic Docker run command. Um, I will be using uh, the, um, the snapshot version, but if you do not define a specific version, it will grab the latest, which is our uh, point, uh, 70 release. Um, and I added the uh, mandatory uh, environment variables. So the first one is to define the, the, the logging level that will be returned from the, uh, from the uh, workflow. Um, the location, well, let's start with the mount. So um, I'm mounting this local, uh, local, fo uh, local folder to the, uh, to the container, and then you can but via using that end variable, you can just uh, point to the workflow that you want to run um, inside the project directory. Uh, the environment is also mandatory, but I, uh, as you can see here, I have no environment uh, declared, so it will just create an empty one uh, when, when running. Uh, an important one is also the run configuration. Uh, the, workflow run configuration that will be used. 
Um, I'm using the, the default uh, no, workflow. So it's a default hop local workflow engine um, in this case. And it's as easy as this. If you hit enter, it will spin up. Well, in my case, I preloaded the, uh, pre the image. But if you don't have the image on your local system, it will grab it from Docker Hub. And it will start running the workflow. Yes. Bye. So you can see here, it will tell you that the, uh, configure the environment isn't available, and it will create the empty configuration file. Um, And it'll run the workflow. It's just, actually, it's as simple as that. Um, the same can be done for pipelines. And because we do not have uh, a, in hop, um, we do not have a, a different system of loading workflow and pipelines. It's just the same commands. Uh, but you point to the pipeline instead of the workflow, and it'll execute Ooh. execute the thing. It's a couple of seconds to start. So it executed the pipeline. Um, the advantage of using a mount is when you are locally developing and uh, doing changes, um, well, let's say, well, yeah. So I have to get used to single click mode, uh, which has been enabled by default. Uh, <laughs> I'm a double click user. Um, Because I'm using a mount, uh, you can you can just locally change uh, change the, the workflows and pipelines and can execute them again, and uh, it will use the new version instead of rebuilding a container uh, and including including the entire project inside of the container. Um, so, getting Hop running in Docker is really straightforward. No, not not much configuration needed. You can use a project that you have already have created, just point to it and execute it. Um, the same container can be used uh, to run to run the hop server. Um, explained in the documentation a bit lower. So this will create a long lived container which uh, contains hop server that you can use to develop against. Uh, let's start one up. And hop server is running. Um, when you then define a remote, uh, remote, so you have to first add a um, add a hop server configuration. Um, this is pointing to uh, the IP address used by the Docker container. It contains the username and password used. And then you have to create a pipeline run configuration that uses uh, uses this uh, hop server. And on the hop server, it will use the local uh, run configuration uh, that is uh, predefined. Um, and now you can select the remote uh, location. And you will see that it is running on that server. So it's fairly easy to deploy a hop server on some heavier hardware somewhere um, and point to that one uh, for your development. Um, you could also go uh, one step further and use a Docker container to start something on Hop server running inside a Docker container. Uh, so in this case, I am uh, 
using instead of using the local uh, run configuration, I'm using the remote run configuration. Uh, so this Docker container will start uh, will start a pipeline on the Docker containers running hop server. Should pop up here. There we go. So it has been um, a trial on the server. So that's our first uh, publicly available uh, container. Uh, as stated, um, every time we um, every time we do a push to our code uh, repository, Jenkins gets fired off, and inside our build process, it will uh, create a new Docker container. And uh, and push it to um, to Docker Hub, so um, you can always use the latest uh, latest snap, snapshot version if you're testing something, um, and we use it uh, quite often. Um, the other image uh, being built is our uh, Hub Web uh, container. Um, I think it has been mentioned quite a couple of times. Um, we also want to provide a easy way to develop uh, on, on well on remote uh, remote resources um, or have a central point where a team can work. Um, and Hop Hop Web uh, uses the same code base as Hop, but uh, creates a uh, creates a web based client um, where you can work on get that one running. The hop command, uh, the Docker command is even simpler. So just have to start a, uh, a an instance on, on whatever port you desire uh, and point to hop web. Seconds, and there we go. And we have Hop running in a browser. Um, same same UI. Uh, there's no difference in functionality compared to the local client. Um, and you can start. To also have the sample project included. You can start developing uh, via web browser. Um, That Docker file is also available in our code repository. It's a Docker file point web that is being used, but it's uh, it's a fairly simple Tomcat uh, Tomcat configuration where uh, Hop is uh, all the, the the web build of Hop is uh, included in. Um, so as uh, yeah. Matt mentioned it a couple of times, and um, um, we use a we use the Docker containers uh, fairly frequent. So what uh, what we also do is on a on a daily basis, we um, do a uh, do integration tests. So we actually. Um, Compared to unit tests inside the code, we actually run uh, run pipelines and workflows um, on a on a container to see if everything works. Um, so, on our um, Jenkins, uh, you will you can see what we uh, test every night. Uh, so we have around 90 tests, so 88 tests at the moment. So each individual individual action or transform, uh, well, the goal is to test each individual uh, action or transform, and um, and specific options uh, in those transforms. So every time a bug request is uh, is created, uh, we create a new integration test um, so that we can see that there are no regressions when we start changing code. 
Um, what this does is it uses a it uses a, um, a script and a Docker image to execute a large set of workflows um, and check if the data that is being processed is correct um, and everything is working. Um, to do this, we created a system uh, with uh, Docker Compose, which runs on the build server every night. Um, it's also in the Docker folder under integration tests. Um, what we did, because in, in some cases you will need um, extra services to run your tests against. So we have a um, we have a base uh, a base. Um, Um, a base configuration which includes um, hop and next to that we have uh, specific um, configurations that add extra services to this base image so for example we have a tests that need cassandra um, so in this case we have we use our base image and we had we add an extra service uh, being Cassandra to run the tests against. Um, this allows us to to well. So at the moment we have around uh, we have four of those uh, specific files, but in the future we'll be adding uh, quite a lot more. Um, one possible uh, scenario that we haven't included yet is to have have Kafka running. Or maybe even have a have a native Spark running to do tests against. Um, so we can add at all sorts of specific uh, services um, to do testing against. So every every service we implement that has a publicly available uh, image, uh, we will be adding tests for that to see if it uh, keeps working. Um, we also use. Uh, the, the latest versions. So if Neo4j releases a new database version, we will use that and we'll see that everything stays, uh, keeps working. Um, so we will instantly or we'll uh, notice when, when things start to break and we can act on that um, for our next releases. Um, And I guess that's pretty much it. Are there specific questions? So since I don't know this, uh, how do you specify which uh, integration test project uses which ah. configuration? So, Uh, inside our integration tests folder uh, in the scripts, we have a the uh, run test Docker script, and what it'll do is it'll um, it will use the the project name. So uh, we have a Neo4j. It, it it matches with the Neo4j project, so it'll know it, it has to use that one. Um, so in this case, in here it'll. We'll see if the file exists, and if it doesn't, it falls back to the default image. Oh, that's nice. Um, that's cool. yeah. yeah, I also added a, you can add a project name, um, name param, uh, parameter to the script to only execute a specific, uh, specific uh, project. Can you show us? Sure. That's pretty cool. So you can, for example, say, well, maybe I should take one. Yeah, why not the database? Um, I'm gonna stop, no, it doesn't. So in this case, um, uh, what we do in our integration tests, and, and if anyone wants, uh, feel free to add this to it. So we made these logical groups to combine uh, things. Um, so all database transforms are being tested inside the database folder. You'll see it's just a bunch of 
um, workflows that are being executed. Um, and this is a project. So you could go, you could go to Hop and say, well, add project, uh, browse. Um, so you can open this project. Um, so the, the first test uh, is a very simple test. It will uh, just, oh, it will run a simple select one against the database connection just to check if the database is, is on one side to see if the database is running and other side to see if this uh, SQL uh, action uh, is working. Um, and so we have, a, a, well, an entire list of, of checks it will perform. Um, so you can use this run docker, uh, run test docker um, script with the database project name. And it'll, well, first build the, uh, the images needed. This would take, well, so it should take super long. That will really help me a lot if I add more and more tests uh, to see. Yes. Uh, yeah. Then I don't have to wait until the whole thing is built on the server. So now it's pulling Postgres because it's running the database. So it's now it's uh, picking up that specific. Um, so let's go there. Uh, creation tests. No. Docker. Yes. <laughs> Docker integration tests. So it's now pulling this database uh, YAML, which is well use the base image and extend it with uh, Postgres latest. Um, that is really Still downloading. Slow. I noticed uh, Docker Hub is being um, slow today, or my internet. I think it's my internet. We have time. <laughs> it's still faster than running it on the server. I was hoping I still had the image. Seems I don't. Or maybe Postgres just pushed a small update or something like that. Yeah, my internet is going slow. There you go. Let's just take, let's just take one. So it transforms. Yeah, that's, uh, the, that's the most. <laughs> And it will also just spit out the uh, the the logs. Uh, yeah, it's as simple as simple as that. That's really cool. Any other questions? So yeah, how would we go about if we uh, uh, if we want to start from a let's say a GitHub project and uh, 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 run that in a container? We script it to check it out and then mount that folder in that Docker container, or something like that. The um, well, the Docker container was um, yeah, the most work here has been done by uh, by Dizhart. Uh, I would like to thank Dizhart for the work. So um, he added a uh, sample to the, um, so we have a custom entry point mm. uh, where you can add a, uh, a shell file. 
And he added a sample to clone a Git uh, repository inside the oh. Docker container. Yeah, so all right. <laughs> I, should, <laughs> I should read my own. I should read our own Docker container. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, yeah, he uh, he extends the the base image uh, and uh, adds the script, and then uses the. Uh, that is pretty cool. Uses this. Uh, I guess that solves so, yeah, a lot yeah. of issues, right? So. Uh, well, I, I, yes, um, I, I guess in, in most cases with these Docker images, uh, we, we made a, fair, a fairly generic image that can be used or can be used as a, as a sample to create your own image because it, it, it usually depends on, on how you work as a company or what your process is. If you want to include all, um, include your project inside the image, want to mount a volume, want to do a Git clone. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, there's, there's, a lot of ways uh, to uh, to to work um, it makes it quite hard to also create some form of generic container. But um, I think this this one can be used in quite a lot of use cases. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that was the question I had. Yeah, I know. <laughs> awesome stuff. Okay. Awesome stuff. Are there any other questions or something you want to see? And I guess this will be. Maybe folks are surprised that it's that easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Should I show people how to add a new test or something like that? You may. I didn't prepare it. But... <laughs> We can't do this. How can we? Let me just try this. So, like uh, Hans mentioned, I have like uh, all these projects, integration test transforms, Neo4j, you know, most of the of the top ones and for transforms, for example. Uh, so basically the main uh, workflow runs a bunch of pipeline unit tests, in this case replace uh, in string. And thanks to the new shortcut, you can basically just do a shift control click and I will open this test uh, immediately or mouse over and hit Z, Z. That's the same shortcut. Um, so uh, this this unit test basically says, okay, I have some sample data, and it's gonna replace some stuff in a string, right? So um, so it's it's trying to do a bunch of regular expressions and stuff like that. Um, so let's start with a new test, right? So one that we haven't done yet. Any suggestions? Uh, switch case, maybe something like that. All right. So again, you know, we need some uh, some simple uh, data as input, a grid, uh, maybe um, a uh, an ID. You usually put something like an ID in there, uh, maybe a value, a string. Let's just keep the test simple. Uh, Let's uh, do A, B, A, D, uh, E, uh, something like that, and Z and C and another B. Um, so 
let's call this sample data. And so I want to have uh, a bunch of dummies, something like that, some targets maybe. Uh, yeah, let's just call this one. I want to see the rows for A go here, uh, B here. C, D, and the rest, right? And then basically you say uh, case uh, B, create a new case. That's all pretty much uh, standard and the default target. And now basically we say, we switch over the value. Everything else looks good. I think use, yeah, that's fine. And then uh, I just look, uh, okay, let's call it 0027 in the hope that we'll at one day have, you know, a thousand ones. Otherwise we, we pick too many zeros. Uh, switch case. Uh, basic uh, uh, the basic test right we might create another one with null values and um, so uh, let's run this I have some uh, something wrong here uh, no target defined oh yeah my bad I thought I had this set up. So maybe that's already a bug that we have, right? Hans? <laughs> How is this possible? I think it I, I think it was filled in. Yeah, we found a bug. <laughs> yeah. Any case, bad example in that case. <laughs> no, good example. <laughs> yeah, it's a good example. So so we fixed a lot of we we found a lot of bugs with these with these tests, right? Simple thing. So it's not a test with the uh, with the, with the transform of the metadata, but but with the dialogue, right? Oh, another one. Uh, let's take another one, uh, Hans. Ooh, something simple. JavaScript, maybe, or something like that. Memory group by, I don't think. Add a checksum. Here we go. So sample data. I uh, don't know if we already have add a checksum. I don't think so. Oh, we already have one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. It's getting harder to find uh, maybe one at the very end. Set field value, something, something simple, right? Uh, flattener, that's one I haven't done yet. Uh, set field value. So yeah, that's a good one. Let's take uh, sample data. Value, value two. This used to be a lot faster. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Q, Z, here you go. And then we basically say field value replaced by value two. Uh, something like that uh, yeah so that's number 28 set field value let's see if this one works and the thing is the the, the longer we, we the more that we add tests the more obscure the the transforms become right but it's important to test them all I saw this with the 
uh, with the dialogues as well. Once you opened up the very obscure ones. Um, so now we want to verify this data, right? And the easiest way to do this to lock these results in, it's obviously uh, correct what we have. Is, is we basically click on it and we say, let's create a data set. And I call these uh, golden data sets uh, with the name of the of the pipeline. So, so golden set field value. And I call the data set file name the same thing. And uh, so that's pretty much it. And in this particular case, I can just write the rows to there. Uh, so golden set field value. Uh, so this is a very straightforward mapping. We run and now the data set has actually this information here. Um, and so uh, now we can create a unit test. It says, okay, I want to have a unit test for this one. Uh, attach, yeah. And specify the golden data set that we just created. Um, so yeah, sort by ID only. And there you go. So this is our test, which is which obviously succeeds, right? And uh, all we need to do now to have this automatically run by the Docker container is uh, yeah, have the unit tests executed. And this leaves a lot of room for um, for adding more tests to this particular transform. So you can have 0028 set field values with specific null values or, or whatever, right? So, um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, set field value. That's how we got started, and so this this runs this. If I now check this in, it will will run uh, nightly in the container. So this doesn't really take all that much time. I think anybody can do it once you see uh, how easy it is. I guess right. Uh, and the creation of these uh, unit tests and everything, I think it's fairly simple. But you kind of have to know how to create the data set. There's a, there's a couple of shortcuts here that, that make life easy. You can also do this manually, of course, and uh, copy this data into the data set. Uh, you know, you, you, can, you can go a lot of ways with this. Yeah, that's, that's the case for all scenarios. There are other scenarios which are more complicated for uh, database related um, work where, uh, or for Neo4j, for example, where we're saying like, okay, so we clean up the database first um, because there's a lot of stuff running on a Docker container. And then here uh, we update a graph, uh, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's a small graph that's, that's being updated. And then basically these tests here, uh, read the data back out from Neo4j to see if, if that is correct. Uh, so there's like a whole bunch of them. This is organized a little bit different. You can clean up, create notes, relationships, do updates, and then in the end, have a bunch of tests, right? So uh, check whether the uh, customer notes are are uh, created correctly, the relationships, the state notes, stuff like that. So you can make this as elaborate as, as possible. As long as the main workflow is called main dash something, it's going to get picked up. And uh, this is called one test, even though it's running multiple uh, actions and multiple tests, it just counts as one test. And that is done not to overflow the, yeah, the uh, the Jenkins interface, I guess. Right? <laughs> um, Hans looked into creating subcategories and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, I think this is cleaner. It either works or it doesn't. If anything fails, it's a failure, so it doesn't really matter anyway.
Does that kind of like uh, give you guys an idea? And we can really use some more uh, hands-on, uh, more people to help out. Uh, so let us know if you if you uh, want to help out, and we can help you. Or yeah, just watch this video again, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Well, Thanks, Martin. Martin. Ah, yeah. Go ahead, Hans. No, no, I just wanted to say thanks, Matt. <laughs> yeah, might be worth mentioning that this is these are tests to make Hop more robust, but this could work in your own projects as well. Uh, these these integration tests could be very useful to increase the stability and robustness of what you do in, in your own projects. Absolutely. Yeah, the, the the same counts. I mean, all all the code used to do these uh, to do these integration tests is uh, is available on our uh, GitHub repository. Feel free to use slash abuse uh, everything that's there uh, for your for your own projects. Um, Let me just file this bug first. <laughs> I already did. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Cool. All right. Um, that means that you were very complete, Hans. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any so topics well. for a subsequent? Um, uh sessions that you want us to cover let us know now or uh, later doesn't matter <laughs> what uh, do we so have the... in two weeks uh part and hans workflows yeah okay similar Back to you. the previous session uh but end to end workflows this time okay um so that's a user-oriented session again and uh, that's 3H9 and 3H10 will be technical again. And the recordings are on YouTube every time. I saw a question uh, popping up, but the, the recordings of these sessions are on YouTube a couple of days after the, uh, after the actual session. Yeah. And that's probably <laughs> a bit too optimistic. I think it's uh, C youtube.com slash c slash apache hop or um that works um, does it that works yeah cool slash apache hop okay. works <laughs> the uh, the official url they give you is a um, is c slash c slash apache hop didn't know this works but it is well, <laughs> i'm not <laughs> complaining <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was intentional. Yeah. Well, let's assume it is. It's a feature. Maybe we have a friend at YouTube. So, yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Thanks thank for joining the session. Yeah, thank you all, guys. Really appreciate uh, the support from everybody. And uh, yeah. We'll go back to bug fixing and, and yeah, if you can help us, that would be great. I think uh, Hans had the idea of dropping 0 0.99 anytime soon, maybe over the weekend or something like that. And well, we then, still have to vote. Yeah, and then we'll continue to test, test, test. Yep. And when all the rough edges are gone, we'll just call it 1.0 release it, vote on it. But yeah, I don't think there will be any issues with the votes. I don't think Apache cares too much about the quality of the software. It's more about the licensing. At all, yeah, licenses. licenses. We, we care about democracy. The quality, right? <laughs> um, so yeah. Have a wonderful evening. And see you uh, on the next one.